Jesus Christ, Sam. It's not even a week since you were promoted to engineer, and you already screwed up big time. Oh, come on, sir. It's not as bad as you think. Not as bad as you think? <laughs> oh, where do I begin? There we go. First, you run the late night freight train last night, punched down an hour after you arrived, then hooked on up to the Valiant Pigeon and left for Las Vegas. Well, the thing was... I'm not done yet! As I was saying, you had Dawn pull the train at high speeds, which she was not built to do, leading to her left side rod break. Oh, would you just cool it? Excuse me? Okay, yeah, I do. Why are you being so frosted at me? It's not Boston's fault. It was his train. The entire groupie situation was his idea. Why am I taking the blame for it? Why? You're right. It was Boston's idea. And I will talk to him. But you're still in hot water. You didn't tell me about the plan, nor have you gotten my approval on it. And that led to you blocking the main line for nearly three hours. Not only did you delay the Valiant Pigeon, but the rest of the other trains that needed to go through. We lose money when this type of thing happens! Now then, since you've only been an engineer for less than a week, let you go with a warning. But if you ever talk back to me one more time, your ass will be fired. Now get the hell off my car! Phew. Man, it's hot. Probably the hottest day ever so far. Tell me about it. It's not even July yet. <sighs> I swear, when is the air conditioning in here going to be fixed? It's starting to get hotter than Jimmy's cab. I agree there. Times like these, I wish I was in Truckee, especially during the big storm. You mean the one that trapped the city of San Francisco a few months ago? That's the one. Well, if it isn't the new meat. How to go in the old man's office? Oh, it was bash. Jesus, hot air. You guys have any nuggets? I really need a soda pot. Yeah, sure, hang on. Here you go, six cents should do it. Thanks. Hey Rosie, one coke please. Oh, before I forget, thanks for getting Dawn's side rods repaired, Nigel. I owe you one. Don't worry about it, Sam. It's quite a hassle, but she'll be ready for you to go tomorrow. Even if he still has his job. Hey, I still have my job. Well, no, I'm starting to ask myself if the job was actually worth it. So, what are you trying to say? That all I've taught you is a big waste of time? I guess so. All those years of dreamed of being a great engineer. And when I finally achieve the dream, I'll screw up. <laughs> Maybe this wasn't the job for me after all. <laughs> what the hell is so funny? <laughs> well, for starters, you remind me of myself when I was too young to reach the rank of engineer. Really? What do you say, guys? Should I tell them the story? Well... If it's a story that can help keep us cool, then go ahead. Yeah, shoot. Oh, you heard him. What's your tale, Nightingale? Well, we have to turn the clock back to around 1949. Yeah, that's it, Rush was taking its toll with Christmas approaching, and it almost seemed that at each minute a train would pass by Fort Fairfax. <laughs> now, around that time, construction on the branch line to Dunktown was still being worked on. Originally, the line was supposed to be opened on Christmas Eve with the inaugural run of the Cannonball. But after that, um, situation with Tucker and Eddie, the date had to be pushed back a bit. Yet, we still made good timing on the construction and would be ready for the opening on New Year's Day.
At that time, I was Jimmy's fireman and engineer trainee. Who was Jimmy's engineer during that time? Jimmy was being operated by the legendary and SP's claim to fame, former Lieutenant Jack Mountain. Jack Mountain? I never heard of him. Well, you should. That guy was the Casey Jones of his time. He's right. Lieutenant Mountain operated every type of steam engine in the fleet, and conquered every single route twice! And he was also in World War II? As well as World War I. He must be kidding me. No, he's not. Mountains have gotten several medals of honor. He's like a god. Yeah, you might think of him as a god, but to me, I think of him as a grouchy old buzzard. John, John, where are you, you little sissy? <sighs> oh god, here we go. What are you doing standing there like you got no pants on? You got more practicing to do, Sergeant. Why do I need more practice? I'm pretty much ready for the promotion. Promotion's promotion. Your switching needs more work. More work? The boys on the Wisconsin can switch freight cars better than you. And they're pilots. Well, you want to get that promotion or not? Uh, like I have no other choice. December 26, 1949 is when this story actually begins. The line to Dunktown had just been completed, with the station almost finished. During that day, we brought Mr. Iverson over to do some personal inspections. While that was happening, I was practicing with Jimmy as we shuttled the flat cars full of plywood and steel beams to the half-completed yard. Over the throttle. Throttle slowly. slowly, yeah, yeah. The sooner you retire, the better. an officer. You only speak when you're spoken to. Well, you didn't need to tell me how to open a throttle. Look, uh, you've been teaching me this for nearly two years now. And your driving is still crap. What? That's more ridiculous than a screen door on a battleship. First of all, it's a submarine. Second, you drive like a baboon trying to steer a Model T across an aircraft carrier. Okay, I heard a lot of bad insults, but this one just takes the cake. Uh, guys? Really? Those god-awful insults of yours make Hoover a better speaker. Guys? You're comparing me to Hoover? He can't even lead an army of ants. Something that you can never do in your life. Guys! What? what? Stop! We're gonna hit that private car! What? John, put on the brakes! It's getting close. We're not gonna stop in time. Praise yourselves. I don't think I can say the same to Mr. Rye's business car. <gasps> oh crap. Do you think he was in there? My, my business car! Well, that answers your question, boy. Sir, are you okay? Oh, yes, 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 I'm okay, John. I'm all right. Anyways, I suggest you don't worry about this little incident at all. After all, ac accidents happen. Ah, ah, Mr. Ainsworth. 
Would you mind telling me the damage, please? Well, um, you, you see here, uh... Well, come on, come on, tell me! Uh, well, let's just say that the back has taken a big toll. The lads in Sacramento can get it repaired. However, it could take a few months. A few months?! You gotta be joking! Uh, I wish I was, sir. But the framework needs repairs. Plus the trucks, bogies, wheels, everything has to be replaced. And how much will it be costing me? Well, come on, man, tell me! In all my years working in that yard, I've never seen the old man that angry. Unfortunately, he set the anger out on me, Jimmy and the lieutenant. In so much fury, he told the lieutenant to never let me touch one single throttle again, so I couldn't get promoted and he could retire. Those next few weeks were basically hell, not only to both me and the lieutenant, but also to Jimmy as well. <laughs> oh my god, dude. I can't believe that you crashed into Mr. Iverson's business car. <laughs> I have to admit, you may have done a lot of stupid stuff in the past, but this, this has to be your greatest masterpiece yet. <laughs> Come on, Tyler, enough's enough. All you're doing is making the whole situation worse, especially for Jimmy. Sorry. Jeez. Nobody has a good sense of humor. It's okay, Jimmy. Stuff like this happens. Yeah, I know. But I should feel bad for John. He'll never get promoted now. Maybe not. But things could change. Alright, Eric. Let's get rolling. We have to get the freighter to the Union Pacific. Okay. See you, Jimmy. Hope things improve. Sam, yes, it's pretty funny. It's still not the reason why I'm telling you this. Now, as I was saying, a few days after the incident, the line was completed and the Simonville Cannonball was put into service. Yet the next week was absolute hell. We were basically working 24-7 and Mr. Iverson began to dock our pay in order to cover the business car repairs. Because of this, the lieutenant wouldn't talk to me at all. At least I still had Jimmy to talk to. Cold today. Probably the coldest this year. Wouldn't worry about it though. The weather should start changing sooner than you know it. You used to sound a little bit down in the dumps. Nothing on your mind? Guess you could say that. Still, nothing to worry about. Well, it looks like you're not the only one. The sun must be up. He's been standing there ever since we got back. Uh, he must be having his damn flashbacks again. Better go get him. Make sure he doesn't get run over. So, what is it this time? The Battle of Point du Hoc? Ah, uh, since a storm is coming. What? You mean a sandstorm? No. No, a snowstorm. <laughs> a snowstorm? Oh, you definitely need to be retired. Lieutenant, John, Mr. Iverson is holding a meeting at the storage entrance in five minutes. You better get down there. All right, good. Everybody's here. Now then, I recently got a message from the LA dispatcher that the area had received heavy rain, and it's making its way through here. But because of the cold weather, it will be happening. I, I fear that that the rain will turn into a snowstorm. But from what I've been told, it's going to be a big one. I can assure to all of you that this is not a joke. I know we're not prepared for this type of situation. But if we work together, we can make it through this. Now 
First off, there's a special train that contains supplies, snow removing tools, and two snow plows in Salt Lake ready to be shipped down here. I need an engine brave enough to set out and bring the train back here. I will give a $200 bonus to the crew who agrees to do this. Okay, okay. 300! 400? Okay, fine then. $500! Still, nobody answered. However, I looked over at Lieutenant, and you could see him licking his lips. Before Mr. Iverson could go any higher... Well, do it. Okay, good then. Go grab that bay window caboose over there. I will call ahead to Salt Lake and tell him that we're on the way. While everyone else was performing their own task, we had Jimmy fired up and had him coupled to the caboose. Mr. Iverson climbed into the caboose with Conductor Hanks, and we highballed towards Salt Lake. <laughs> After leaving Fort Fairfax, we were really flying. I had trouble keeping up with the lieutenant, but I managed to keep the fire hot. After several water stops, we finally arrived in Salt Lake. We quickly turned Jimmy around, got the caboose put on the end of the train, and made our final preparations. During all that, I was still thinking that this trip was still a waste of time. Snow in the desert? It was ridiculous! Once we left, I was going to be in for a big surprise. Wow, we're making great time. Uh, yeah, you're really making me work. Stop complaining. In the army, they would make you run until your legs were jello, and then they would make you run back. Army this, army that. Is that all you think about? How about you shut up and keep that fire off? I wish I could throw you a What was that? Uh, I said I wish I'd been in the army so I could be tough enough to handle this fire. <laughs> you wouldn't even make it through a day at camp. still snowing and was getting worse. I've seen a lot of crazy stuff over the years, but this? Snowing in the desert? This was insane. Yeah, we kept on going. After passing Joseph's Bradle, we approached the northern region of Thomas Canyon. That was when we began to experience some trouble. You can do it. I'm trying. Get the white and flipping. Jimmy was right. Soon his drivers began to spin uncontrollably. The lieutenant opened the sand, but there was still a problem. John, the sanders frozen shut. I'm a fly in the air. I'll be right back. Jack? Jack? Oh my god, Jack!
Jack, wake up! Jack! What the hell is going? Oh my god. Sean, help me get him into the cab. How does he look? <sighs> Not that good. He's unconscious and his right arm is broken. He sure hit his head really hard. Mr. Iverson, he needs medical care immediately. The closest hospital is back in Port Fairfax. But now that the storm is getting bad, we don't have an engineer. How are we supposed to make it now? If only there was a way. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. You said it yourself. We need to get moving. Haven't you already caused enough trouble? Oh, come on, sir. How many times do I have to say I'm sorry? Sir, please. I know I screwed up before, but I swear it won't happen again. Please, sir, we have no choice. He's right, sir. What choice do we have? If we don't get Jack medical attention now, then... we won't make it. Screw up. You're fired. You hear, John? You won't be disappointed, sir. <laughs> Mr. Hanks, take Jack back to the caboose. I'll be staying up here to get my hands dirty. I quickly jumped down and thought the Sanders with a steam hose. After teaching Mr. Iverson how to fire Jimmy, I released the brakes, opened the sander, put the reverser forward, and slowly opened the throttle. No slipping, John! Hold on, he'll catch. I hope so! Jimmy's wheels spun, but soon they caught. The train slowly began to move, and soon enough, we picked up where we left off. Okay, John, give it all Jimmy has. High ball! Is that? Oh my god! It is! We made it! We actually made it! <laughs> oh, good job, John! Good job! <laughs> what do you know? Boy, actually did something right for once. As soon as we got back to the yard, the lieutenant was taken to the hospital and we shunted the train for the storm to pass. What happened after that? Well, after the storm hit, everybody began to clean up to get the trains back up and running. I stayed with Jimmy at the yard to help shovel. 
After all the trains started running again, Mr. Iverson invited me for a drink of coffee. Well, sure was quite a storm we had. Yep, we still pulled through. Yeah, so how's the lieutenant doing? Oh, he'll be just fine, John. Don't worry about it. I actually got a chance to visit him earlier today. Hopefully in a few weeks he'll be back on his feet. John, I've been doing a lot of thinking. You have? I have to admit, you've shown a lot of effort during that run I seen of you. For a second there, I was asking myself, is that the same man that crashed into my car? You really think so? Absolutely. You were quick, wise, knew what you were doing, and had a lot of courage under the pressure. I think I actually misjudged you. That... That became my biggest mistake. John, I'm terribly sorry for misjudging you like that. I should be putting a lot of trust in both my crew and my engines. I've been such a fool. Would you please forgive me, John? Please. Give me that promotion and we'll call it even. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you remind me a lot like Jack. Very well then. For all your hard work over the years, I hereby promote you to the rank of engineer. Congratulations, John. Really? Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Th I won't let you down. I swear I won't. I'm sure you won't, but I must warn you though, half of your salary will be going into the repairs of my business car for the next few weeks. Remember that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was really funny, sir. Wait, you're serious? Sir? That would explain why I had to pay for your food during the first few months. So what happened to Jack? Well, after he got out of the hospital, the lieutenant soon retired and thanked me for saving his life. Well, sort of. From what I've been told, he's living down in Long Beach and he's enjoying his retirement. So, that's basically it. But what do you think, Sam? Yeah, it's a good bedtime story. But what was the whole point of telling me it? To set an example, but most importantly, to prove a point. Sam, being an engineer has always been your dream, right? Right. Well then, perhaps you should stop making a big deal out of Mr. Iverson yelling at you. Listen, Sam, you need to realize that during your career as an engineer, nothing's going to be great. There will be days where you will make a mistake. It doesn't mean you should throw away the towel. If you keep on going, learn from your mistakes, and play your cards right, you'll be a great engineer. I can ensure it. You get what I mean, Sam? Yes, yes I do. You're right, John. Work on the rare has always been a job I enjoyed so much. I know I have a long way to go, but I ain't giving up just yet. So, we'll be seeing you tomorrow, then. Definitely. Thanks, John. <laughs> Always glad to help out. Very good. Very good indeed. Everything's all been resolved. All except for the bloody heat. Woo-wee! Boy, is it hot in here, or is it just... You! Uh-oh. Get over, boss, so I can kick your ass! Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, man. Uh, can we just work something out, or... Oh, no you don't! Get back here! Uh, excuse me lads, but are you two gonna do something about this? You know, before someone gets hurt? Not me, I'm on break. Hey, Sam's not my fireman, so he ain't my problem anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just proves it. I'll never understand America's sense of humor. Reach for the wind, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the song, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To the shining time station, where dreams can come true, 
waiting there for you So much to see, so far to travel So much to learn to know Friends by your side, hopes to hold on to Who knows how far we'll go To a shining time station Where dreams can come true your own imagination's waiting there for you. To a shining time station where dreams can come true. Waiting there for you, waiting for you.